Today we are going to be discussing Nazism and its connections to the occult. <laughs> We've got a lot to cover here, and we are going to be plunging headfirst into the mouth of madness to uncover what is going on in Nazi Germany in terms of occult practices. And there is quite a bit. Um, to give you an idea, we're going to be talking about Nazi seances, the idea of communing with the dead in order to gain military intelligence. Uh, we'll also be discussing uh, plans to eliminate Christianity, basically kill all the Christians, um, and make this warped, very, very warped version of, uh, of paganism the, the new religion of Germany. So we have a very lot of very odd things occurring here that we'll need to talk about, including even the idea that's thrown around in aerosophic circles of, of Luciferian worship and, and demonic power. Uh, so there is quite a lot of odd stuff here today to cover, and we're, we're going to be descending headfirst into the mouth of the, uh, uh, the Germanic madness that occurred in the uh, 20s, 30s, and 40s. <clears throat> This is, uh, if you haven't heard of any of this, it's no surprise. Uh, it, it, it didn't take me a long, t it took me a very long time to discover this. Uh, and I think a big reason is a part of it is religion has been so ostracized from the uh, na historical narrative when it comes to the modern era that, um, that it's something that is a radical alternative when we look at it through a religious perspective. Um, when we look at events in the modern era through religious perspective, it, it can be rather jarring um, because in history, especially when it pertains to the modern era, we're so focused on political machinations, right, and trends. Um, we, we make it a war about fascism uh, versus democracy and, and communism, right? Um, and we kind of pin it on that rather than, than looking deeper into, okay, what were the religious practices of these people? What were these other... Uh, theological and philosophical ideas being thrown around. Uh, what we have here is, to, to start this off, what we have here is a, a movement begins in 1888, right? A, a woman named Madame Helena Blavatsky, right? She claims to have traveled to Tibet uh, where she was enlightened by a cult that claimed to invoke the powers of the first race or astral beings or spirits. She decreed there were seven root races, one of which the Aryans created ancient Greek society and would one day return to bring spirituality to the modern world. Okay. Now, uh, Helena, Helen Blavatsky is not an insidious woman, right? Um, the... She's going to inspire a, a revival of paganism um, worldwide. And there's going to become a folk movement of theosophy, which is going to mix, mix the pagan revival with what is effectively science fiction. Um, and it's going to become a worldwide phenomenon, right? The movement, however, is going to erupt in a much, much larger scale uh, in Germany, and it's eventually going to evolve into the Nazi cult itself. Guido List and Jörg Liebenfels uh, begin Germanizing the new pagan revival with their radical construction of what you could call Arminism or Ariosophy or the folk movement or Wotanism, as in for Wotan or Odin, uh, the Norse god. All of these, most of these cults declared rather fallaciously that, that, <laughs> that the Germans were the descendants of the Aryans, right? And that they were created via electricity from aliens, right? The, the Aryans were. The Germans fell as a race, the story went, uh, because other races corrupted their bloodlines via breeding. Right? And believers held that purifying the German blood right, would, would bring about a utopia for them. Right? Um, so the idea of getting rid of the other people who are non-German, that's where that comes into play later when we get to the Nazi regime. 
the Jew here in the very beginning is condemned as a scapegoat for all of this, right? In, in their odd mythology they're creating, they, they believe the Jew is purposefully undermining uh, Germans in some sort of Bolshevik plot, right, to take over Germany. And they've been there all along, hampering them, corrupting their bloodlines via breeding, etc., um, ironically, they're not blaming the British or the French for this, their misfortunes. They're blaming the Jew, right? And this is before even before even World War One begins, right? They're already they're already spreading this anti-Semitic uh, rhetoric. The idea here is that magic, specifically Norse paganism, um, especially List, who really believed in this, was the true religion of Germany, right? Norse paganism was that the ancient ruins of old held power and that the old ways must return, as in we must return to the Norse religion, right? This is going to kick off the Volshik or folk movement in Germany, um, which did believe that an individual could become an adept, um, capable of summoning higher powers uh, from the spirit realm or astral plane. Um, it give you an idea of the magical implications of this. Here we've kind of seen a lot of these seeds sown, these monstrous seeds sown here into the earth about that, that are later going to evolve into Nazism. But these religion, that's this new religion that's occurring here, because we can't say it's a pagan religion, right? We can't say this is Norse paganism because it is such a mutation of it, right? It is such a, um, it's essentially the old paganism that has been warped and corrupted into a monstrous form. Um, there are going to be numerous groups that are going to spring up around the folk movement. Uh, the Thule, the Astera, right, the Edda, the Germana de Orden, right, or Ger the German Order, uh, were the most prominent of these secret societies um, to arise in popularity. The result here, with all these little cults um, around the folk movement, is that it's going to be a many-headed uh, hydra, right, with these heads stemming out in all directions, but they're all going to later intertwine together to form the basis of the future Nazi party. Interestingly, in a 1938 speech in Nuremberg, the uh, ever mendacious Hitler, uh, with no prompting, has attempted to stifle occult rumors. National socialism is not a cult movement, a movement for worship. It is exclusively a folk political doctrine based upon racial principles. In its purpose, there is no mystic cult, only the care and leadership of a people defined by a common blood relationship. We will not allow mystically minded occult folk <laughs> with a passion for the exploring the secrets of the world to steal into our movement. After this, of course, he professed his Christianity. If you know anything about Adolf Hitler and the Nazis, they were very, they, they, they lied, okay, a lot. Um, <laughs> and he's lying here, as we're going to show, um, to prove that these, these cults did have a uh, mystical, right, or a, a wild occult upbringing. Um, this, we'll look at the Thule Society, right, a, a coven devoted to is devoted to German racial theory and the folk movement. The Thule, unlike these other cults or covens, decided to grow in power by po becoming a political party, right? Targeting the lower classes. In 1920, the, the, the cult rebranded itself as the German Workers' Party. And in that same year, Adolf Hitler would join the party spearheading the success of this this strange coven turned uh, political party and he reorganized it then as the national socialist german workers party or as it's commonly called the nazi party right members of this thule cult to give you an idea um prominent nazi leaders later nazi leaders would be involved in the thule cult that, that includes rudolf hess hans frank heinrich himmler Alfred Rosenberg, Karl Herrer, Gottfried Feder, Julius Lehmann, and Dietrich Eckhart, right? All these guys would rise to the ranks of the Thule cult to become members of the Nazi party. 
at leadership positions in the Nazi party. And, and it's not just these individuals like that we can link to the cult in the area of Sophie. It, Hitler himself, um, there's a lot of evidence Hitler himself was, right? He definitely has the belief, the standard area Sophic belief that of the teaching of the Aryans, right, of the master race, um, that Jews were subhumans, um, right? <laughs> They're connected to these cults. Um, in fact, Jörg Liebenfels, one of the the fellows who starts, right, it was one of the founders of Area Sophie and this whole movement, occult movement, um, states in 1932 that Hitler is one of our pupils. The other crazed founder of this religion uh, also has links to Hitler, which is Gado von List. Um, Hitler's friend, Joseph Greiner, confirmed that Hitler owned at least 50 Astera manuscripts written by Gado von List. Alfred Rosenberg, a close friend of Hitler and one of the <laughs> a Nazi leader who was <laughs> really, really bad, um, he who himself was pagan, uh, wrote in his diary on June 19th, 1934, that in a meeting with Hitler, uh, Hitler repeatedly emphasized that he had been a pagan all along and the time had come when the Christian poisoning was coming to its end. Right, so that's some pretty good evidence that he was Hitler was one of these Ariosophic individuals. Hitler, besides surrounding himself with all these believers in the occult, right, appointing all these 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 occultists to leadership positions in the Nazi Party and in in the, in the later government, he actually employed the legendary magician and occultist uh, Eric Jan Hus Hannesen. Um, as his personal soothsayer for, for some time. Uh, this fact is actually going to be confirmed by a German reporter, Bella Fromm, uh, who noted in her journal that neither Hitler nor Goring make decisions without consulting their astrologers. Hitler's is Jan Hannesen. The sheer number of books on the occult that Hitler owned should convince even the most incredulous, right? Among them were Ernst Schertl's Magic, History, Theory, and Practice, uh, Analyst Platonus, a book on the occult sciences, um, a, actually a book on werewolves, uh, The Werewolf, a Peasant Chronicle, a book on runes, Nordic runes, titled High Time of Mankind, an occult book titled The German Book of Psalms, the prayer book of the Ariosophs, racial mystics, and anti-Semites. A book claiming to be a message from the dead. A book on ancient German pagan practices of worship. Um, a book on soothsaying uh, called I and Sight, their spiritual cosmic and, and psychological significance. And of course, a book on the apostate positive Christianity titled Racial Souls and Christianity. There's another book on witchcraft titled uh, Secret Sciences, Alchemy, Magic, Mysticism, etc., etc. Et I, I think there's more on this list, but I think you get the idea uh, that Hitler owned all these books is probably an indictment to, to uh, likely that he was in researching or involved in this uh, occultism. One of the most obvious pieces of evidence is the fact that <laughs> the Nazis make their swastika, right? So the swastika is the symbol of the pagan revival in Germany, right? It is the, it is the symbol of all these Ariosophic cults. And <laughs> the swastika is going to be the uh, banner of the Nazi party, right? It's their flag. I, how obvious of a connection <laughs> right, is that? Um, the Thule newspaper, right, uh, titled Munchener Beobachter, uh, Babachter, would actually become the primary newspaper for the Nazi administration, right? Um, and, and so even the, the Thule cultist Karl Ehr would remain the editor of the Nazi newspaper, right? So <laughs> the occult right, uh, newspaper becomes the Nazi newspaper. Ideology, however, is not going to be the most obvious connection to these cults, right? A voracious hatred 
uh, for the Jews, a, the belief in the need to get rid of or sacrifice uh, those they believe to be subhuman, right? And the belief in magic all remained the utmost, right? The utmost priority for this cult turned political party. So when they switch over um, from a cult, a cult, you know, a cult to the political party, none of their ideals change, right? Um, they're still after these things. They're still wanting uh, the Jews to be gotten rid of. They're still believing in this master race nonsense. Now, obviously, <laughs> a bunch of <laughs> a pagan cult could not be elected, right, um, uh, in, 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 uh, in Germany during this time, right, uh, that easily. So they're all going to be pretending to be Christian. Most of them are. Hitler himself is going to be doing that. He's going to be donning this Christian veil in order to collect votes. Of course, when we see him get elected, he quickly changes his tune. Um... There are individuals, Nazi propaganda minister uh, Joseph Goebbels uh, writes in his diary, he, Hitler forbids me to leave church for tactical reasons, right? But these new and equally radical beliefs are also being injected into the religion over time. Blood purity had also evolved into a quest for religious purity as well. Hatred for Judaism grew into a hatred for Christianity. Martin Bormann, de the deputy Fuhrer, stated that Christianity and Nazism were completely incompatible because the Christian religion originated from Judaism. Heinrich Himmler believed that the principle of Christian mercy to be a hindrance to the planned war with the subhumans, right, as in the Jews and God knows who else they're talking about there, right? As a leader of the SS, he believed the primary duty of the SS was acting as the vanguard in overcoming Christianity and restoring a Germanic way of living, right? We're quoting him there. Himmler also stated on the subject of Jews and Christians, we've already removed one of these powers, at least from Germany, the time will come to settle accounts with the other after the war. Then we'll unfrock these priests. Neither their God nor their Virgin Mary will be able to do anything for them. By 1937, Hitler had fully rem removed his mask, right? His veil, this, what he's pretending to be, and state that Christianity was the most horrible institution imaginable and one ripe for destruction. Hitler stated that Christianity was naked Bolshevism and universally destructive. Now, it was Alfred Rosenberg, who under orders from Hitler, the, the official party ideologist, um, drafted plans for the destruction of Christianity in Germany. Highlights of this 30-point plan demanded that the Christian cross be removed from all churches and replaced with the swastika, that all the Bibles and all the saints be removed from altars. Publication of the Bible was to cease, and Mein Kampf was to take its place on the altars as the foremost source of ethics. Priests and pastors were to be replaced with national Third Reich orators, and above all, Christianity was to be exterminated. The Nazi plans to eradicate Christianity had been occurring for some time in Germany. The Christian community was not oblivious to this, right? Um, and instead was keenly aware to, to Nazi connections to the occult. Many outspoken priests, ministers, and Christians were killed. And by 1936, all crucifixes were moved from German schools. Above all, the Nazis were succeeding in turning the masses against Christianity. In one mass you know, Nazi demonstration in 1938, a Nazi speaker rallied over 200,000 people to attack the cathedral in Vienna as the crowd demanded and chanted for the deaths of the priest and the clergy. Violence on the streets and Nazi attacks on Christians occurred frequently. But there is going to be a very fierce Christian opposition to Nazism. 
And because of this, it was decided by Hitler the war on Christianity would have to actually wait until after the end of World War II, right? They couldn't fight wars on two fronts, um, was their reasoning. So many of these, most of these Nazis profess to be Christian, right? Most of the Nazi leadership professed to be Christian while the Nazi party was actually um, actively trying to destroy Christianity. Um, their inability to destroy Christianity had been long since foreseen by earlier Ariosophists. They decided to create a method in which to, con to convert Christians into Ariosophists without them even knowing it. Okay, this is called positive Christianity. It was touted by the other founder of Ariosophie, Lars von Liebenfels, and later the occultist Alfred Rosenberg. Right? This is going to be the primary delivery of that cocktail of lunacy or those two individuals. So under this guise, a new brand of Christianity is created, um, one that would convert gullible Christians into Ariosophist without them even realizing it, right? So they get to keep their name, they get to keep calling themselves Christians, they get to keep praying to Jesus, but we need you to believe all these things the Ariosophists believe, all right? And so that's what's more or less happening. Um, in this Germanized insanity, okay, um, Christ was actually a blonde-haired German who was, of course, killed by the Jews, uh, the true Germany, uh, true enemy of Germany. It also taught that Christ's disciple Paul had corrupted the true teachings of Christ and that all forms of Christianity other than positive Christianity was devil worship, right? Was evil. They held that the Apostles' Creed was false, right? One of the basic tenets and that the divinity of Jesus was irrelevant actually because we'll quote him here the Fuhrer is the herald of the new revelation right they're trying to positive christianity is saying yes jesus but he's our new messiah right he's the second coming in 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 positive christianity The, so when doing this, the, the Nazis had effectively create, converted millions of Christians into Ariosophists, right? Without them even really realizing it. What was occurring was menticide or brainwashing, percepticide, right? They are brainwashing these people. And to understand how this happened, right? We have the, the, the terrible defeat in the First World War. We already have this racial ideas floating around about we're great, we're superior, all that stuff. And they get crushed in the First World War. And then there's terrible economic hardship that follows in Germany. Uh, the people felt dejected and downtrodden. Um, and so they were very susceptible to the, to the anti-reality that the Nazis are going to, and the area sophists are gonna push on them. It, this rejection of reality is a symptom of an unsatisfying existence, right? When the truth becomes unsatisfactory, the lie becomes irresistible, okay? And, and reality itself becomes refutable, right? Um, and so the Nazis enthralled many people with a lie, a lie that became a dream, and eventually that dream became a nightmare that they were living in, right? It, however, obviously took little ingenuity for uncorrupted Christians to connect the obvious and conclude that the Nazis were the political manifestation of a pagan cult. The Nazis' continued occult endeavors as a political party proved they had neither outgrown their origins of the Thule cult um, nor their occult beliefs, though they were determined now more than ever to hide their true nature. Its most important goal, um, what they're going to do here, the SS is going to create a special task force on witchcraft, right? That was active from 1935 to 1944, um, called the Hexen Sonderoftriches, right? Uh, still have to excuse my German. Its primary purpose was researching witchcraft and its supposed power. 
its most important goal, however, was to discover how the Christians defeated the witches and that they would use this information to help them in the coming war with Christianity. With Hitler's approval, the German military and government would employ thousands of soothsayers, psychics, astrologers, and mystics um, who they would, believed would win the war with magic. The SS, Joseph Goebbels' propaganda ministry, and even the German Navy were primary employers of the occult. The German Navy, lacking radar earlier in the war, used mystics in an attempt to locate Allied warships, right? Locate British warships. Methods would include using dowsing rods um, and evil paranormal seances in the hopes that they could call forth the spirit of the dead to assist, the, to assist them in pinpointing the location of a British ship. Can't make this stuff up, right? <laughs> Uh, the SS Institute, Institute of Occult Warfare um, was formed. It was tasked with using sorcery to engage the enemy in psychological warfare and obtain enemy intelligence. The most famous um, example of the occult institute's endeavors was to find and locate the Italian dictator Benito Mussolini when he was kidnapped by the Italian resistance. The mystics engaged in necromancy and performed many seances to contact spirits in hopes that they might know the location of Mussolini. Initially, actually, the, it's going to be successful, right? That's initially, and then initially they're going to claim that the seance was the cause of finding Mussolini. It was admitted years later, however, that he was located by the SS via conventional means. The occultist Joseph Goebbels' uh, Ministry of Propaganda were primarily tasked with conducting psychological warfare on Britain and further solidifying the myth of Nazi superiority at home. Goebbels stated quite plainly, we're employing in every way possible the crown jewels of occult soothsaying. Nostradamus must be believed in again. The Dissemination of occult brainwashing propaganda in the form of astrology and prophecies continued to garner support in Germany. The Nazi employment with media, of mediums, of fortune tellers, of necromancers, of astrologers, um, and mystics is a testament to their devotion to the occult. Right? We can look further to see further evidence of their devotion to this, this ideology in the state education of children, how they're educating children, particularly those in the Hitler Youth. With control of an entire nation, right, this, this Nazi cult um, had a great interest in indoctrinating the future generations. Rosenberg, right, long known for his association with Ariosophy Sophie and his hatred for Christianity was placed in charge of the education of the German children. Naturally, any semblance of the Christian religion is removed from schools and Rosenberg's outlandish book campaigning for the sacrifice of subhumans was required reading for school, school children. The, the slogan, Blood and Honor, taken from the occultist book uh, was inscribed on the children's uh, belt buckles and pocket knives. Numerous pagan ceremonies occurred within the Hitler Youth um, resembling witchcraft right, or, or pagan practices, um, particularly to this worship of an unknown deity of fire. The titles of such ceremonies include Requiem for the One that Has Fallen and Fire Rest Upon This Earth. One of the choral songs sung by the Hitler Youth was as follows. We are the joyous Hitler Youth. We do not need any Christian virtue. Our leader is our savior. The Pope and rabbi shall be gone. We want to be pagans once again. Okay. There's a lot of evidence here. The, this new neo-pagan right, uh, uh, religious movement had already evolved into a rapacious chimera of human evil. 
Um, right, it, and when I say chimera, I mean this is a Frankenstein abomination that is taking, it's greatly corrupting and perverting Norse paganism with science fiction and racial theory and black magic and all sorts of other things uh, to create this, this horrible, horrible thing. Um, their rancorous hatred, right, of Judaism and the Christianity is going to take them down this predictable path of idolizing the devil and uh, of the demonic. Um, the devil would take on in Nazi the role in Nazi circles that can a lot of times be seen in modern day modern day um, devil worship. That that Lucifer is this misunderstood figure. Um, the thinking went, and he was unjustly cast out of heaven. More ominously, the devil might be evil to some, but good to others. The SS and Heinrich Himmler would officially endorse this narrative when they commissioned a propaganda book titled Lucifer's Servants in 1938, published by the German government, in which the argument was made for the worship of the devil or Lucifer. Long before this, however, right, the, the idea of the demon was um, was injected into this thought, right? It was injected into Area of Sophie. The demon was seen as an entity that a sorcerer could conjure in order to increase his or her personal power as well as magical abilities. So the Nazis had not only resurrected the old pagan religion, but more importantly, they were resurrecting exactly the type of black magic that, that was so condemned right back then. The Nazis actually embraced this narrative, uh, believing themselves to be the victims of Christianity and claiming that the true German religion was destroyed by perse Christian persecution in the, in the medieval witch hunts. Strangely, they also adopt this belief that um, <laughs> that they, um, that all pagans were in fact witches um, and consorted with demons, and that uh, witchcraft and the demonic was um, was not only real but had always been the true religion of the German people. De Rose uh, Rosenberg, right, deputy Führer stated, what we denote as good, others see as evil. What we call God appears to others as the devil. So a new religion had been born, one based on racism, elaborate science fiction, <laughs> an old pagan religion, um, so many different things. Demons, and more importantly, the idea of of conjuring and harnessing the powers of the demonic had been part of the movement um, since its inception, so it's very early on. Um, Anton Mayer advocated in his book, Earth Mother and Witches, that the true and original religion of Germany centered upon an ancient demon called the Earth Mother, and its demonic powers came from nature. Ernst Schertl, um, in his book, Magic History, Theory, and Practice, actually advocates for the demonic in a passage that was actually annotated by Hitler himself. Schertl wrote, Satan is the fertilizing, destroying, constructing warrior. He who does not carry demonic seeds within him will never give birth to a new world. Okay, and that is annotated by Hitler himself. He is interested in that. The founder of analytical psychology, Carl Jung, drew conclusions about Hitler, right? The following conclusions about Hitler. He made the case after meeting Hitler that Hitler was not insane, but was in fact possessed, all right? In 1938, Jung described Hitler as a medicine man, a form of spiritual vessel, a demi-deity, or even better, a myth. With Hitler, you were scared. You know you would never be able to talk to that man because there is nobody there. He is not a man, but a collective. And not wishing to leave his comments open to interpretation, 
he quite frankly states that Hitler is possessed by the ancient god Wotan or Odin, whom Christians would know by another name, the devil. Okay, so he's saying that Hitler is possessed by the devil. This founder of modern psychology, one of the founders of modern psychology is saying this. <clears throat> we look at um, this religion, right, that, that is forming here. Hitler was quickly evolving from man to God in the eyes of a German. When we look at school, and what this is a prayer school children were forced to read each morning. Fear my fear given me by God. Protect and preserve my life for long. You rescued, you rescued Germany from its deepest need. I thank you for my daily bread. Stay for a long time with me. Leave me not. Fear my fear, my faith, my light. Hail my Fuhrer. So we get the idea that that what is happening here is that Germany is moving towards a religion that is either going to be based on Wotan slash Odin, Lucifer, or or Hitler himself as sort of this new messiah character. Now the Nazis, as you might have imagined, had done a marvelous, I mean marvelous job of fulfilling the numerous qualifications in the Judeo-Christian mind for the role of the demonic, right? In the, we think about this, the, in the Abrahamic religions, the first demons were the real world historical idols of Moloch and Baal. These religions required demons to, uh, required people to sacrifice their children, right? British Prime Minister is actually going to connect the two. He's going to say that that Hitler had conjured up the fearful idol of an all-devouring Moloch of which he was both the priest and the incarnation. Indeed, the similarities uh, between Moloch and, uh, and Hitler are, are somewhat similar here when we think about it. Um, the, the idea was to in the Bible was to gain a good harvest for the exchange of the lives of these children. Um, likewise, the Nazi cult believed that their society was corrupted by blood of the impure, the inferior, and that the sacrifice of these individuals was the path to utopia, right? So they're both trying to get to this utopia through sacrifice. So the the Nazis had not only met the qualification of demonic in the Christian mind, they had surpassed it, right? Because they're not only sacrificing children, they're sacrificing everyone, right? They're killing everyone. So I think it's safe to say that the Nazis see Christianity, have come to see Christianity as their primary enemy during this time. And uh, so much so that the, right, that Hitler actually has plans to assassinate the Pope, an SS brigade to assassinate the Pope. Um, so there are plans for that. And actually on the other side of it, the Pope attempts to assassinate Hitler on various occasions as well. Um, so Nazism is absolutely at war with, with Christianity. And I will uh, leave this a remark uh, from Sophie Scholl, who was the, uh, one of the writers of the right, White Rose, which was a Catholic resistance, student resistance against Nazism. Sophie Scholl wrote, who was 17, when he uses the name the Almighty, he means the power of evil, the fallen angel, Satan. His mouth is the foul-smelling maw of hell, and his might is at bottom accursed. True, we must conduct a struggle against the National Socialist Terrorist State with rational means, but whoever today still doubts the reality the existence of demonic powers has failed by a wide margin to understand the metaphysical background of this war. Sophie Scholl was executed via guillotine not long after uh, posting this pamphlet by the Nazis, obviously. Um, as you can see, there is a war occurring right between Christianity and and Nazism and um, we will do a video on that uh, the next video we do we'll we'll talk about the Christian resistance to Nazism um, which is also going to play into 
to what we've talked about today, the, the uh, Nazi connections to the occult, right? Um, because the Christian, all right, the Christians at large are going to really, uh, really demonize the Nazis for their connections to the occult, and they're fully aware of it, right? And, and um, that's going to be used as propaganda to rally war support, right? Um, and actually Rosenberg's plan to, the Nazi plan to eliminate Christianity is going to influence um, even American, what America is going to decide to do um, in the war. They're actually gonna give um, w assistance to Russia, right? Um, due to the discovery of these letters, of this information um, that the Nazis are planning to eliminate Christianity. Um, so it, it, it does in some ways, Christianity is going to change the course of the war um, and it's going to be very influential in doing that. <clears throat> when we talk about the Nazis and this, this odd, uh, just perverted form of Norse paganism, we need to make it very clear that this sort of, of what the Nazis created is in no way a judgment on, on paganism at large. Right, um, there are no pagans who act this way. There, there, there were no pagans who believe this kind of stuff. Uh, there are none now, and, and there were none before. Right, so uh, what occurred in Germany is an aberration. Right, well, it's an abomination too. I wanted to say that but it's an abomination, but it's also an aberration. And um, when we think of paganism, it's not really fair to lump in the Nazis with paganism, even though they are technically a extremely perverted form of Norse paganism. I hope you found uh, this material enlightening. I have written an article on the subject, um, which I will, it will, the link will be in the description. If you click on that, you can see the sources for everything I've written so far. Um, well, everything I've written, everything we talk about today, you'll be able to see a source for it. Um, so you can see where I'm getting my information that it is. Um, reliable, right? Because uh, we are talking about quite a few crazy things here today. Um, I got all the information from the words of them, the Nazis themselves, right? Um, I didn't rely on secondhand accounts, uh, and um, which is important because there is a lot of nonsense um, propaganda. Uh, there was a lot of it post-war about these Nazi occult connections, and a lot of it was made up. It wasn't true. Um, so what I presented today is actually the actual evidence of, of the Nazi connections to the occult itself. Um, and my research was a rather extensive one. So if you see something on the internet that, that, that isn't about Nazi occultism, that isn't something I talked about, chances are it's not real. Okay. Um, just a forewarning there. Um, folks, I, I hope you enjoyed this, this video. I know we talked about some wild things. Um, but um, yeah, the, the Nazis, very dangerous people. They were anti-history, anti-science, anti-reason, anti-religion, anti, you know, they were just anti-everything, right? Uh, the complete flip side of, of what we think of as Western civilization. They were just the antithesis of that, right? Uh, folks, uh, I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, please subscribe. Um, we will, our next video will be on the Christian resistance to um, Nazism and covering the other side of this conflict occurring here. And then we will do some videos, I believe, the one after this will be on black magic in the modern era. And then I'm hoping to get someone who is a practicing uh, witch or a uh, Wiccan or, or pagan to uh, interview um, so that we get a, a perspective of right the typical um, types of magic and magical practices uh, occurring in modern day. Uh, because I'm, I, I can provide you know, a baseline information, but um, I, obviously a practitioner is going to be able to offer a lot more uh, information than, a, than, a, than somebody looking on it uh, from the outside could. Thank you so much for watching. If you have questions, um, feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to answer them. 
um, and talk to you with them uh, about that. All right, thanks so much for watching. <laughs> Have a nice day.